still not all the panelists are present here, but we have some time limits. That's why we have to start right now. And well, before we start our panel discussion, which you know very well is about science and scientific researches and developments. Before we start, I would like to attract your attention to this picture. Why I'm showing you this? I just want you to understand that every progress in every sphere of science is only always related to new huge projects. I will give just one example, uh, one example of one nuclear project. It will be enough for you to understand that the realization of such a project is a huge step uh, in a way of the development for all the civilization. Just have a look at it. The nuclear project uh, was has had only one goal to create a nuclear. Uh, weapons. Uh, no one actually discussed any other ways of using it. It was only made to create nuclear weapons. The deadline was pretty short, and but what happened after that? That first nuclear bomb transformed in the first in the world nuclear power plant. You know that the Korchatov Institute created the first nuclear power plant, and that was actually the date of birth of nuclear industry which then resulted as a thermonuclear industry, the first world-known Takamaka. Um, there was um, low temperature superconductivity created. And now this is a prerequisite for the creation of electric um, new electric movements, which is like basic and essential for a lot of transportation nowadays. In the year 1958, the first nuclear submarine of Soviet Union, Leninsky Komsomol, was created, all thanks to those scientific development. What is very important that this factory where those uh, submarines are created is a very important plant for um, oil production, actually. After that, in the year 1959, the first nuclear icebreaker went on waters. And for now, Russia is the only one country in the world that has an, a big number of icebreakers, which makes us highly competitive in the sphere of Arctic development. The next step is nuclear energy in the space um, and the energetic plants in the space. I will just give you one example. So nowadays, we talk a lot about the space development, the space um, researches. It's quite impossible to do without uh, nuclear, um, some nuclear developments. But for now, we see how obvious, how necessary uh, is to create nuclear plants. For now, one megawatt plant is created by Ross atom with um, the help of many other different institutions. Have a look at the left part of this slide. Before I explain you it, uh, the upper right corner, you see the methods of mathematic analysis. It's quite important just to understand that the computers that we all use and the methods of uh, maths actually are only existent for one reason. When the rocket uh, was sent to space, people had to calculate the trajectory of its flight. That's why we created the computers and the methods of mathematics analysis and modeling. But you have to understand why do we have these supercomputers right now? Because the nuclear weapons tests were prohibited and they were tested on the computers. That's why we created supercomputers. You have to understand that huge mega projects are the stimulus for the development of the civilization. Going out to the left part of the picture, you see that this very fast development of the civilization requires the existence of mega plants. These are nuclear research reactors, synchrotrons, some lasers of different types. And for today, we see this breakthrough development, which uh, only happens because and due to the creation of these super plants all over the world. This breakthrough, uh, these huge steps forward are always linked to, what, to the researches and development in the forefront of the science. Another very important thing. Um, the switch uh, in the ways of using of those uh, mega plants, like neutron sources, for example. 
you see here the structure of the substance with atomic um, substance. But what radical change we see for today? Before, in the past, we were studying nature with synchrotrons, and we created for the, at the beginning the macro technologies. There was um, machinery, and we only had to find out whether its actual size it corresponds to the one that was designed. We used the actual physical tools to do that. After that, we switched to microtech. These are electronics, micro electronics. When we also had to find out the size of uh, the equipment, but you don't use the ruler, you know, you use the optical ruler. Now we use the atomic size, the nanotechnologies. We manipulate with the atom and we create the constructions that has the size of an atom. And it gives us an equal possibility to um, find out the size of the material. But this can only be done with the X-ray. What does that mean? That means that those very power, powerful mega plants as synchrotrons, besides its very high importance, are now the metrological tool to the development of the technology. We had the atomic technology without any metrics, and, and we, ch we changed something in that atomic technology. We can't use it any longer. And that is why. Um, Despite the creation of synchrotronic centers in Europe, for example, every country, not, not very rich one as Spain or some eastern countries, every country now is struggling to create uh, its own national synchrotron because this synchrotron is a prerequisite for national security and technological independence. And this is the key tendency that we're facing right now. For now, uh, the plants and the facilities as CERN, for example, which we had, by the way, here, which unfortunately we had to close after the uh, failure of the Soviet Union. These are, those are not directly now linked to the security uh, sphere, for example, but are very, very important for the science. Those are very relevant to synchrotronic uh, developments. And the, all the technology, technological development de depends on that. That's why I'm actually mentioning it right now. And before I finish, let me show you the next slide. Today, with the help of X-ray technology, we can find out the ultimate position of the, at of the atom in every material. And with that knowledge, we, after that, create the technology that gives us an opportunity to use this position of the atom, and that means the characteristics of a certain material. But for now, uh, we, now we know that every atom uh, has any characteristics as a result of its movement, and the movement is a key to the understanding of the function of any p particle. What is our ultimate goal? It's quite obvious. Uh, now uh, we are learning the further structure. But we have to understand how do atoms from the left picture create the structure that we see on the right picture. And that is why we need new synchrotrons. And that's why we start learning the movement. And this is the key to drastically new technologies. That is why we need those mega plants and mega facilities. For now, we are the only country on the post-Soviet Union space that uh, possesses these huge capacities. We have the most powerful in the world research reactor. And we have a second privileged partner. At in the project of the creation of European laser with the free electrons. I gave you this information to make it clear for you what is happening on this very deep level. We see the deep changes in the meaning of the creation of those mega facilities and plants. And now I think it's quite logical to give the floor to Mr. Forsinger, because I know that he's deeply aware of all those programs um, since the times when he was the Minister of Education. Probably Ruslan will also add a couple of words. Let me start from you.
Well, dear colleagues, um, let me start my presentation. We have quite the same opinion on the mega projects, that those are the tools for the development of the science. And I would like just to give you an example uh, of the project of quantum informatics. You all know uh, that the calculating capacity is now growing exponentially. And today we can already see that some characteristics like frequency, the tactic processes are not growing any longer for a few years already. And by the year 2020, we can expect that the size of the separate transistor should be atomic and we can't we won't be able to follow the classic technology any longer. So the question is whether the informatics and the classic technologies will be still developing. Of course, we have demands. And let's have a look how can we solve this problem and how can we solve this challenge. Uh, we think that this will be exactly the very mega project that will uh, give us a stimulus to uh, further development. We can use new materials on one hand as graphene, for example. And on the other hand, we can try to create a new um, elemental uh, base, which is based on the standard logic on that is at, at the same time using photons and plasma instead, instead of electrons. We have a certain understanding of that technology. We have a certain view of how these computers should work. But unfortunately, on the hardware level, it has not still been created. Another way is to reject the um, existing logic and go to quantum informatics when uh, every particle is at, this, at the stage of zero and one. Recently, we had quite a big number of algorithmic calculations that show us that uh, when we at the certain problems, in the certain cases, the capacity will be very high. Uh, calculating the physical capacity and physical the creation of that computer, we are now just making our first steps and it's not quite clear for us yet what uh, technologies we will be using at its creation. We have a few approaches. Um, one of them is like superconductivity of atomic um, chains and some other technologies on fixation of separate atoms that we uh, know already about. Probably these will be the exact technologies like uh, that we're going to be using. Uh, from our point of view, this could be one of the new mega projects. As it has been stated already, mega project uh, besides um, reaching its own goal can also help to develop some um, relevant spheres of, uh, of science as nuclear sciences and etc. We all know the example of flash memory that is uh, basically using on uh, quantum effects of qu quantum modeling. We have another quite um, interesting example of uh, quantum sensors. Um, now the main difficulty in the creation of quantum computers is to gather the qubits into the system that will survive for quite a long period of time that will give us an opportunity to make certain calculations. The systems are very sensitive to, uh, you know, some external influence and are quite easy to dissolve. But using these problematics, we can use this system as a sensors that are re re actually reacting to some external fields. And indeed, we have some new um, gadgets appearing that. Um, that works on timer, for example, that give us an opportunity to very precisely calculate the temperature, the gravitation, the magnetic gravitation. And I know that we have now a project undergoing uh, on gyroscopes that is functioning only on only one atom that it's uh, put into the net of, of a diamond, actually. And this very huge sphere of quantum informatics, I hope, will be uh, stimulus for the whole science development. I represent the Russian uh, Quantum Center, and we just wanted to show you that this race has already started. Probably it's not that obvious, but now we have in the world more than 10 specialized quantum centers all over the world, and uh, from time to time some new of them appear. Um, for example, Oxford, Oxford University is now uh, opening its own quantum center. And in this sense, Russian quantum center could be considered as 
um, is quite a successful example. We are an institute that can um, can really concentrate our efforts on solving certain problems, especially when we don't really know how to face the challenge that exists. Uh, we have some groups working on superconductivity and cryogenic technologies. Some other groups are working on diamonds. Some other groups are working on optical um, nets, for example. But we can't really know uh, before we start what will be successful. But I'm sure uh, these processes themselves could be really useful in the ideology of mega projects. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. And I give floor to Anatoly Krasilnikov. Their colleagues, I represent ITER project. ITER is the biggest international mega project. 33 countries, 34 countries, and one half of humanity. It's 78% of the international gross product is contributed by the participating country. Russia is contributing 9%, 25 systems, most advanced technological systems are produced in our country and we will get 100% feedback in know-how. That's the biggest technological platform in the world. Every participant invents uh, something it can do better than the others. That means that the level of technological development in the ITER project is significantly higher than the world average. Russia is playing a major role in this project above all because the Tecomoc idea is uh, the foundation for this project born in uh, 1976 in Kurchatov Institute. And uh, after the personal participant from our foreign colleagues, we managed to prove that the, the plasma temperature can achieve 30 million grand. And when they measured this temperature in Kurchatov Institute, we had a boom of Takoma construction in the world. That's the privilege for every country to have their own Takoma. We have 300 of them in the world. It's important to participate in the projects of this scale because you are challenging yourself against the world level, whether you can start your own school, prepare professionals at the universities and uh, come up with new technologies, meeting the needs of the projects and uh, having other importance and other significance. What it's in told about that saying that low temperature superconductivity superconductivity are extremely important for peaceful application. Due to inter project, we managed to rise uh, the in level of industry for titanium superconductors. The State Duma is uh, discussing the opportunity to start production using this superconductivity. The other order we place, which is one more breakthrough technology, has to do with energy sector, energy industry. That's high temperature superconductivity, which also be used in medicine. I'm sure about that. That's why these mega projects are technological platforms and technological drivers for us to have uh, to have unexpected visions of future, things we could not think of uh, recently. We should cooperate here, establish new connections, start new relations. Just yesterday, we opened the conference on nuclear energy in St. Petersburg. We had 1,200 participants from all over the world on thermal and nuclear energy.
and uh, our project is major there, of course. We're discussing future of this uh, project, discussing the spin-offs, the opportunities of this project, which can end up with unexpected positive results. That's the important side of mega projects I personally want to stress. Unfortunately, our country is actively involved in this process, including our leadership in ITER project, because our industry, our scientific centers were most fit to meet the targets of this project. Here we speak about Kurchatov Institute, Yefremov Institute in St. Petersburg, Troitsky Innovative Research Institute, Applied Physics Institute in Nizhny Novgorod, Nuclear Physics Institute in Novosibirsk. Our major research centers managed to contribute it. They know how to this project, and they managed to raise support, gain support from the government, from the universities on the ground. And at the end, we have the full cycle. And as the result, we have a scientifically intense country, the future Russia, as we call it. Of course, our country needs mega projects. So they are highly welcome here. And we should cover most innovative fields of science those fields where Americans, European partners still fail to gain success, or they faced with any other technical difficulties. So we should focus on these very projects where we can contribute our expertise. I think that I know that Kurchatov Institute uh, is also considering a big new project, and it could be an interesting opportunity for us. Thank you so much. Just a couple of thoughts from my side. First, we should develop uh, the projects. I said that at the beginning. Let's take ETERN. Countries contributed $10 billion, and they construct this installation in the south of France. And it's important that it's being made according to Russian vision and with Russian participation. But since this energy installation is of future vision, every single country is developing their national programs in the regard of this. Russia has its own project with leadership of Atom. The Kurchatov Institute playing the major role here. We are designing our own Takamak and modernizing our own installations. It's important to say that since thermal nuclear energy is still the thing of a future and we're contemplating with the thoughts how we can implement that in reality, here in Russia, we have already started to combine heat reactor, that is basically the active uh, nuclear reactor with tacomac to produce this kind of hybrid. And that's the thing of the future. That means the instant rise of nuclear energy effectiveness. That's what we develop here in Russia. And our Chinese, Chinese colleagues, above all, are welcome to participate. Of course, that's important for us. In recent 10, 20 years, Russia has become an integral part of the international mega project landscape. Not a single $1 billion project was implemented without Russian participation, starting from our Soviet heritage of uh, human resources, technological development to the modern technologies. Well, is for having been late. I was not given a permit to enter this area. My car couldn't enter. 
I had to go through 27 police controls, <laughs> and so I'm gladly here so that we can collaborate. Yeah. And if you reduce the number of police controls, yeah. visa controls, and other difficulties, it would greatly enhance the scope of international collaborations with Russia. We share your words <laughs> completely. <laughs> we understand. Okay, would you please, maybe you tell us something, yeah? Except this. <laughs> uh, well, but that's the most important yeah, thing, I, agree. I think. I agree, okay, you can have well, a rest. Yeah. Well, you, you see, I'm not, in my own work, involved in mega projects of the kind you are talking about here. Your mega projects are in applied science, very clearly very far out to applications that would carry over immediately to improving quality of life for your citizens and also protection of the environment and similar. When we talk about mega projects in science, I think we have to distinguish between two between uh, two very different kinds. One is the projects of the kind that are pursued at CERN, with your participation, of course, where we need thousands of scientists and engineers to build apparatus that will enable us to get entirely novel and very often unexpected insights. Myself, I'm in biological and biotechnical research. And when we talk about big projects in my area, then we are, uh, we are meaning something quite different. We are assembling a group of scientists of which each one will do more or less the same thing. I mean, a typical example is the sequencing of the human genome, where you would have thousands of units that would determine pieces of the genomic sequence, and then you would have centers that would receive this information and combine it into the whole uh, sequencing result. And when you start in my area a project of that kind, then you already have to know what you want. You see, getting the sequence of three billion nucleotides is a very well-defined project, and you then need engineering, you need computational facilities to just do it. But it is not the same thing as having a mega project in particle physics that would provide, per se, unexpected and new insights which would not be possible without that big installation that has been built by thousands of physicists and engineers. So I would say that when we talk about mega projects in quotation marks in biology or biotechnology, then usually we are moving already very, very far toward applied science. Thank you very much, Professor Wittich. I think so your sentence, because absolutely clear, we have two different lines. One, this is mega science project, it means mega equipment, mega installation. This is one direction in mega project. Another, where it's a typical example, a genome discovery, for instance, with a three billion nucleotide, it's absolutely clear, the same type of 
of uh, action. It's also a mega project, but nevertheless, such type of mega project, like a protein structure based on mega equipment installation, like synchrotron, which you have, for instance, in Zurich, and neutron sources, which give us a huge uh, volume of information about this project in biology and in other type. And today, one of the attractive projects it's called Convergence Science and Technology, which we merit nano, bio, informatic technology, and cognitive science. And this is so called in Russian and English and big technology. It's one of the biggest trends, challenge for today, which based on mega equipment. And today in Korchatov Institute, we started to realize uh, we have a first in the world Korchatov Center for conversion and big technology. This is based on neutron and synchrotron source, supercomputing, and the wide variety of medical biological equipment. This is an idea. This is a very important today interdisciplinary issue. Okay, I would like to thank you very much once again and apologize for this delay, which happened with everybody, even with Nobel Prize winner. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask Academician Panchenko. He, he present, uh, if, uh, oh. yes. I beg your pardon. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to Academician Panchenko. Mr. Panchenko is very important person for us. Um, he is chairman of the board of Russian Foundation for Basic for Fundamental Research. And he is also the president of the one of the leading institute of Russian Academy of Science, the Institute of Laser Information Technologies. And this institute is basic for the development of the very important and fashionable addictive technologies. He's also um, working at the uh, Department of Physics at the Moscow State University. On behalf of whom of these people you will uh, speak today? Let me just speak um, on behalf of myself. Um, thank you for giving me the floor. I wanted to support all of the previous speakers and just continue the thought that we saw at uh, the very first slide here shown by Mr. Kovalchuk. I think the mega science programs are indeed very important. The real mega science projects are always deeply interdisciplinary and I think this is crucial for us. And we use this term more and more and the term was introduced at Korchatov Institute. This is the term that um, the term of convergence, which means the deeper way of, uh, you know, inter interconnection. And it can be applied to any sphere, actually. And I think this um, term really describes it best, and I mean here, interdisciplinary projects. I would like to give you an example. Uh, as a prove that medical biological researchers are now playing a very important role in science. Um, it also re is relevant for quantum physics. One of the largest convergent programs, uh, programs is a diagnostics of uh, uh, active brain and it's actually very difficult program. It's very difficult and almost impossible to make an early diagnostics of, for example, Alzheimer's disease without uh, some interdisciplinary uh, knowledge. We can now measure the uh, fluctuations of the magnetic field of the human brain up to 10 or 15 Tesla. And that is only possible due to the interdisciplinary characteristics of the project. The example that has been already given here, the example of very close cooperation. 
and we are really have very high expectation from the cooperation of biologists with Ixfel. I know that at Ixfel they have built already a few um, f some facilities that are managed by the molecular, mo molecular laboratory MBL. And we are really hoping that the possibility of generation of X-ray impulses um, of uh, the second's length, uh, we actually don't have any other um, norms for that. Uh, Fent and R the second length. And this process gives us an opportunity to have a look at the processes that happen in molecules at the level of elemental, um, at the very elemental level. So you see here that we now have an opportunity to see actually the processes happening there. We can actually watch a movie of, you know, the the dissociation of eight of atoms, for example, or the choking of atoms, or some other different projects. This very modern and uh, accelerating technology gives us fantastic opportunities, as in space and in time. And I remember that Mr. Kovalchuk also mentioned the fact that at present we are actually uh, seeing this boom. Every day we see the increase in the number of publications, some new tools that we're using. And the same is happening actually in, in biological, in medicine. We have new concepts appearing every day. We have new technologies. We have now this nano approach that we are using particles. We collect them and we get some general things from those particles. And I believe that now the whole world is at the entrance of new technological world. We're not creating the difficult and um, technological detail from uh, the, the, some very complicated tools that we have. But we will do that from micro nano powders, for example. And this is an opportunity that is under development right now as well. And let me actually tell you a couple of words about the Russian Fund for, pay for Fundamental Researches, uh, which I'm working at. This fund pays a lot of attention to the opinion of scientific community of Russian Federation and the whole world. We try to cooperate with the administration of the country, and the technologies that we have are already supported by a number of interdisciplinary projects. Uh, we have a wide support by expert communities, by the international community um, in scientific spheres. Um, these are all people involved and interested in mega sciences. Uh, in conclusion, um, I just wanted to mention that the um, People's Republic of China is one of the sponsors of this Open Innovations Forum and Exhibition. And this year, uh, we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the um, our cooperation with uh, People's Republic of China, National Science Fund of China, and Russian scientific funds. Uh, they celebrate the Russian Foundation for Fundamental Research. They celebrate this anniversary for their cooperation. And I just wanted to underline that our foundation gives a wide opportunities for cooperation uh, with all our partners all over the world and our partners from China as well. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Panchenko, we're now heading to the end of our uh, round table, and now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Forsenko, advisor to the President of the Russian Federation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kovalchuk, for giving me the floor. I'm sure that all the participants of the forum got this uh, piece of paper, or oh, they read it uh, on the internet. Uh, the paper with the key topic of the forum and few qu some questions that were actually set there. And I see that one of the questions there is mega projects for mega breakthroughs. What mega projects in what spheres of the technologies will influence more the development of global technologies and global economy. We actually just saw few some examples of that and all of them were really impressive. 
the introduction by Mr. Kovalchuk was also very important. And uh, both Mr. Wittrich and uh, Mr. Panchenko mentioned what mega project actually is. What is this notion and how shall we understand this mega project thing? I believe that there are two logics of choosing the mega project. One of them, the first logic, is in realization and achieving of the most social economic goals, not in uh, domestic level, but on the international level as well. And uh, remembering those goals, to achieve them, we create new mega projects. This could be one global facility or one global project that will gather the efforts by the specialists all over the world from all the spheres of the science. It will be a new project to a, a huge source of investment. And there is a second logic. Uh, the projects that create within the internal logic of the development of the science. Those are projects that uh, appear and exist not because of the economical goals and the economic demands of the state, but they exist and they appear because we see that the science is now ready for this project. And these projects are actually the, the basics and the essentials for further development of the science. These are very important as a possible uh, brand new tools for the science or some brand new re researches. We can speak about information technologies, nuclear technologies, global computers, or whatever. These all could be the very good examples of meta projects. As Mr. Kovalchuk told us, those mega computers, for example, are um, they exist thanks to the demands of the uh, state, of the society. If we speak about synchro drones, for example, this is a different thing. This is a very unique tool that is created not as an economic solution, but as the only possible magistral way for knowledge, for understanding of nature, actually. Uh, for Because humans, they would like to understand what is happening in mega and in nano scales. You remember the Nobel Lecture of Famine, who was um, say uh, that name of it was there is a lot of space below there, down there. And this understanding that we can go deeper and deeper down there is what makes us create new and more, more important mega projects. Those breakthroughs that are mentioned in the, in the title of the forum could, can also be different. If we speak about Tacomac, for example, the breakthrough here is the appearance of brand new um, type of energy. If we speak about supercomputers, the breakthrough is in the opportunity, in the possibility of modeling of enormous databases and the modeling of some unique events and um, notions. If we speak about CERN, for example, uh, the breakthrough is in understanding of the functioning of the world and of the matter itself. <laughs> but I believe that those mega projects that fulfill the demands, or the, the most of those demands, are those that will provide us with the biggest breakthroughs. Those are the projects that will provide us with the, the most convergency of the specialists from all the scientific spheres. We told that the uh, physics uh, development are quite important for the further development of biology. And this is another proof to what I'm saying. There is no division now in science. It's all the same right now. And the convergence, in my opinion, should not only happen in the different spheres of science, but all over the world. Uh, there should be no limits between different people, between different countries. The world now is functioning in that way that we have to create international centers. We have to improve our cooperation levels. Uh, at the same time, with the creation of those centers, we have to develop the 
our co co cooperative capacities. We have to improve our ways of exchanging the information and the experiences that we have. And I believe that this open innovations uh, statement and name are quite good here. This is like a motto for us that will motivate us for further cooperation. And well, suggesting an answer to the question, what key mega projects will influence the most the development of global economy? I believe that those are mega projects that touch upon more the, the biggest number of economic spheres and that provides the science the biggest number of, of different ways for further development, and not only science, but economics as well. Mega projects, besides some specific result, indirectly give us uh, hundreds of different ways for further steps, for further development. I believe that we have to try to involve as many spheres of the science as we can, and that will be the mega project. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Forsinko. Um, in the spirit of what Mr. Forsinko had said, I just wanted to tell you that the paradigm of the science development has changed drastically. Since Newton, we've been going the same way. We took the unique whole nature we tried to understand it as it was and we failed and only after that we tried to you know take it one break after another and we understood that we had to took it by particles you know after learning every particle of the nature we finally realized that it can't be taken separately there is no actual division between physics biology or chemistry it's all united but we went so deeply in different directions that the paradigm of the science had to change by now. You have this puzzle box, you know, and every piece of puzzle is a very um, specific discipline. And you have to find what it fits and where it fits. And we can actually start a very contradictive process but on the other hand, we can start to create a whole, you know, picture. And the first step is the usage of nano, bio, and um, all other technologies. This ambiguous convergence will be the main mega projects, the main challenge of the twenty of the century twenty one. Сказать нам несколько слов, пожалуйста, Салихов. Уважаемые коллеги, я просто хотел бы, мы договаривались в заключении, сказать несколько слов того, что делается в России в области медопроектов и дать такой короткий обзор, чтобы завершить значит, вот эту дискуссию. Dear colleagues, I just want to share a couple of ideas of what we do here in Russia in terms of mega projects. Previous speakers told that the Russia has been participating as the full member in more than four international projects. Here you can see the list of our major projects, uh, free electron laser project in Europe near Hamburg, second project. Uh, yeah, if we take about free electron laser, we contribute 25% of uh, financing. Second project, international thermonuclear experimental reactor, ITER. Russian contribution accounts to slightly more than 9%. And one more project to mention here, the new one we haven't mentioned here before. Uh, it's called Facility for anti-proton and ion research, 17.34%. And this year we signed an agreement to participate in the major international project called European Synchrotron Radiation Facility. Here we have uh, more than 6% of time for the, uh, for the budge of uh, Proton, and I think it's a major challenge 
for scientific community now, I mean, their participation in these projects, because they have to be saturated with uh, many scientific activities, both in terms of development and implementation of these projects. Besides, we finance from the federal budget uh, a series of uh, research groups, uh, scientists, uh, basically, these are scientists working in CERN. And when you walk through the tunnels of CERN, you will inevitably see the uh, labels, the brands of our Russian institutes, High Energy Institute, Kuchatov Institute, and the others. In this way, our contribution to all sorts of projects is difficult to overestimate, to underestimate, sir. At the end, um, I'd like to stress that, of course, we have to increase participation and develop our national projects as well. And the Russian Federation has to have our own, too. We have six local domestic mega projects. The first is neutron facility in St. Petersburg. Uh, this one is called PIK neutron source with the major density of neutron batch, with the highest actual density of neutron batch. And in terms of its capacity, it will be better than the reactor in Grenoble. We have signed a series of agreements on uh, the use of this reactor, and uh, we're looking forward to making Gatchin a major neutron center. The second project is called uh, NICA uh, on the uh, premises of uh, Joint Institute of uh, Nuclear Research. We research super density matters here. And in this project, we also have a true international dimension. Many countries express their willingness to participate in this project in different uh, forms, either by providing equipment or in any other form. Finally, three other projects, which are smaller in scale, but they are no less interesting. Uh, that is first Russian Italian project Ignitor, connected to low temperature capture of plasma. The project of uh, uh, Butkler Institute of Nuclear Physics in Novosibirsk, Russia. By the way, there we produce the equipment enabling the free electron laser and the Super Tauchan fabric, that's the new project we're developing there. We're actually designing the equipment for that. One more interesting project in Nizhny Novgorod in uh, Applied Physics uh, Institute, uh, Exavat Center for Extreme Light Studies, uh, is based upon the existing premises and existing equipment. These projects uh, are connected with the national synchron uh, source at the premises of the Kurchatov Institute. I think that uh, all the new projects will be actively developed in future, including the international collaboration. And our participation in international project is also a great incentive to develop the uh, neighboring industries, as we have seen in the example of CERN and other major projects. Thank you, Sergei. I think we're about to end our session. I just want to stress certain points uh, at the end. Indeed, what is important, talking about mega installations, these are the things that indicate technological importance of the country. It's not by chance that every technologically advanced country 
wants to have this installation in the country that indicates a certain level of technological development. In the Soviet uh, times, we constructed reactors in Libya, Vietnam, and other countries. And uh, they wanted to have this installation there as well, stressing the importance on the world arena. These are the countries having this installation that belong to the so-called elite club. There's just a tiny portion of them in the world, and Russia is the member of this club. Let's take the uh, principle of uh, botches that was introduced by Soviet physics, and later we have talked about uh, that's the technology based in technology for free electron laser. That is the idea produced by Ginzburg article back in the Soviet time. And the first and, and the later was produced by the Soviet scientists. Just to recall you, Takamak, we're constructing in the south of France. We have the Soviet idea as the foundation for this uh, project. Projects we have in Germany, they also are based upon the Soviet ideas. So we're not just the uh, financing party or technological donors. We are also the intellectual donors, intellectual contributors. Upon the president's initiative, we have an important shift. We become a part of the intellectual landscape. We are contributing more than 1 billion euro to Europe, just as the participation contribution in two projects. And as soon as these projects are being implemented there, we also come back to our country and implement our own projects here. And these projects are open for every country in the world to participate. That's how we implement the idea of open innovation here. And that's what uh, Andrei Fursinka told about. So I think that open innovations are here and welcome everybody to participate in this project. Well, after listening to the last 20 minutes, I think it is important to mention that historically advances, real breakthroughs in science and technology have not come from mega projects. They have come from individuals and not from the Soviet system, but from individual scientists who could work under the umbrella of the Soviet system, they would probably also have survived under any other umbrella, but it's individuals who came up with the ideas. You see, two years ago, the Nobel Prize for Physics was given to Mr. Hicks. Now Mr. Hicks published two papers in his lifetime. Both papers are two pages long, and they, they predict the Higgs particle. And then we have developments of mega projects for several decades, which are motivated by the fact that Mr. Higgs and two other uh, physicists came up with the suggestion that there should be this particular elementary particle. And that gave rise to building huge mega projects in Geneva. And with other large projects, it's similar. The basic idea doesn't come from having a huge organization. Usually it's an individual or an individual working with a small group that comes up with a breakthrough idea. And I think this should be, stri this should be strongly emphasized here because much of what goes into mega projects is then engineering. And that's of course extremely important, but it is very rare that mega projects have uh, led to genuine breakthroughs. 
in generally speaking, I agree with you, but not completely. I explain you why. Uh, you see, uh, excuse me. Uh, the thing is that uh, Professor Wittrich is absolutely right, saying that every idea is produced by single individuals. And brilliant people, brilliant minds promote the science, and their ideas lead the world forward. That's the important thing. Let's take CERN as the example, the uh, technology of batches proposed by Butker. Uh, that's the individual, that's the personality, as well as other personalities working for the development of science. But as soon as the idea is there, then this idea is taken up by other people. And there should be a lot of people involved and the whole system and only the government is capable of creating the whole system, the technology, the facilities, the premises to promote this idea further and further. So there is no contradiction here. We start with the individuals, with personalities. They come up with the idea. But as far as implementation is concerned, we need the group of people and the system. That's the first thing. The second thing, I agree with the importance of certain personalities. But there is the other way. When you start implementing a complex project as a spaceship, a submarine, nuclear reactor, you have to solve so many technological difficulties that by solving this, you have this breakthrough. You burst the civilization, explode the civilization from inside. Let's take the spaceship project. Tsiolkovsky and other scientists contribute to that, but through joint efforts, we have this breakthrough. And we, as the country, are able to maintain our leadership in terms of space technology and nuclear energy. And that's the effort of uh, a group of people. Professor Wittrich, thank you so much for this important contribution. Let us not underestimate the efforts of personalities. That's the foundation for us to work. But uh, we all know that the end, the final result, is the product of both idea and implementation. But the idea accounts to 3% only, and the rest accounts for the system and joint efforts of uh, scientists and other people involved. So let us find those people who can make our dreams come true. Thank you so much. No, no, okay, we, unfortunately, we already finished. A couple of minutes, because uh, we already finished, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Activities, thank you. Our Chinese colleague is a little bit late, unfortunately, but let us be generous and give him the floor to say a couple of words. For science and technology, I'm uh, very happy to take part in this session. And, uh, and just uh, uh, listen to another opportunity and uh, to uh, openings and uh, uh, some suggestions to this uh, make uh, uh, projects. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, yes, we stated once again the importance of mega projects, so I guess our session is over, our panel discussion is over. Let us greet our colleagues. Thank you very much for our foreign, foreign participants, for, uh, for your patience, especially when you pass through the gate. Once again, I am sorry for this problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.